Hi guys, how are you doing? Uh, we're doing grammar today. Chapter 18, section 2. The title is Hard to find subjects. Most sentences have subjects that can easily be found. You can find the subject easily. Uh, Huda went to school today. Who went to school today? It's Huda. However, some subjects contain or some sentences contain subjects that are more elusive they are hard to find each of the four sentence functions declarative interrogative imperative and ex exclamatory deserves individual examination uh, subjects in declarative sentences beginning with here or there when there or here is found at the beginning of a declarative sentence, it's often mistaken for the subject. Most of us, when we have there or here at the beginning of the sentence, think that her, here or there, sorry, is the, uh, when there or here is found at the beginning of a declarative sentence, it is often mistaken for the subject. We think that one of them is the subject, although the subject is the noun we are talking about later. For example, uh, there are five students in the class. So there, in this sentence, is not the subject. It's students. Students. The subject of a sentence is never there or here. In normal use, there and here are usually adverbs that modify the verb by pointing out where. Occasionally, there may be used merely to start the sentence and will have no adverbial function at all. In this case, there is called an uh, expletive word. Many sentences beginning with here or there are inverted. The subject follows the verb. Rearrange such a sentence in subject verb order to make or to more easily to more easily identify the subject. For example, there are the buses. This is an inverted sentence. Let's rearrange it. The buses are there. So it's easy to find the subject. The subject is buses. Uh, we have a chart here. Look at the chart. Sentences beginning with there or here, and then sentences on the right rearranged with subject before verb. There are the downtown buildings. But the downtown buildings are there. Here is the ticket for your trip. The ticket for your trip is here. There is money available. Money is available. Occasionally, and we said occasionally means rarely, sentences beginning with there or here are in normal word order with the subject before the verb. This rarely happens. There she is. Sometimes we find the sentence this way. There she is. So the subject comes before the verb here. In some declarative sentences, the subject follows the verb in order to receive greater emphasis. Let's see. By deliberately placing the subject at the end. These sentences put special emphasis on it. Such inverted sentences usually begin with prepositional phrases. Let's see the examples. Toward the elevated train rushed the evening commuters. Uh, if we rearrange or rephrase the sentence, it would be the evening commuters did what rushed toward the elevated train. Uh, another sentence, around the corner, uh, careened the speeding car. If we rephrase it, the speeding car careened around the corner. So we put the subject in the first sentence at the beginning. Sorry, at the end too. We put the subject at the end just for emphasis. Subjects in interrogative sentences in some interrogative sentences, the subject comes before the verb in a normal sequence and thus is easily identified. Which car gets the best mileage? Which car? The subject here is car and the verb is uh, gets. So we have the subject uh, before the verb. Often, however, the sequence is inverted. Uh, in interrogative sentences, the subject often follows the verb most of the time. An inverted interrogative sentence can begin with a verb like is the Chicago Zoo open in the morning? If we rephrase it, it would be the Chicago Zoo is open in the morning. 
do they own that house? If we rephrase it, it would be, they do own that house. When will the coffee be done? The coffee will be done when? If we rephrase it. Subjects in imperative sentences, and this is very easy, the subject of an imperative sentence is usually implied, it can be guessed, it can be implied rather than specifically stated. Most of the time, it is not there in the sentence. When I say stand up or go out or thank you, where is the subject? When I say thank you, the subject is implied, it's I thank you. When I say stand up, I mean you stand up, okay? Uh, in imperative sentences, the subject is understood to be you. Notice in the following chart that the subjects of the imperative sentences on the left are not directly expressed. They are implied. The examples on the right illustrate where the subjects are understood uh, to occur in the sentences. Sentence one. First visit the Sears Tower. First visit the Sears Tower. First, you visit the Sears Tower. Number two, after the tour, come home right away. Rephrase, after the tour, you come home right away. Number three, Sue, show me this, the map. Sue, show me the map. After rephrasing it, Sue, you show me the map. Be careful. The word Sue here is not the subject. The subject is the pronoun you. In the last example in the chart, as I said, noted that Sue, the name of the person being addressed, is not the subject of the sentence. The subject is still understood to be you. Uh, number four, subjects in exc exclamatory sentences. Subjects in exclamatory sentences. Some exclamatory sentences have the subject before the verb, but some do not. So. In an exclamatory sentence, the subject may come after the verb or may be understood. To find the subject in many exclamatory sentences, simply follow the same techniques that you would for finding subjects in interrogative sentences. For example, how could I have known? How could I, how could I have known? If we rephrase the sentence, I could have known how. So the subject is I. Uh, what does he know? What does he know? Hmm? If we rephrase it, he does know what? So the subject is he. Other exclamatory sentences may be so elliptical. Elliptical means some parts are deleted. That both their subject and verb may be understood. For example, fire. Fire means when I give order someone to fire, you put out the fire. Or let's go. Uh, the sentence should be this way we demand to go we demand to go so the subject and the verb in the first example you put in the second example we demand we have an exercise here uh, locating hard to find subjects write the subject and verb in each sentence underlining subjects once and verbs twice we agree that uh, in this book, all the time we'll do this. The subject is underlined once and the verb is underlined twice. Put any understood words in parentheses. Look at the example. Where is the meeting? So where is the subject and where is the verb? The subject is meeting and the verb is is. So if we rephrase this question, it would be the meeting is where? The meeting is where? So the simple subject is meeting and the verb is is number one on the shores of lake michigan sits chicago again on the shores of lake michigan sits chicago so where is the subject or let's rephrase that we need to rephrase the sentence first chicago sits on the shores of lake michigan so what sits on the lake or on the shores of the lake Chicago. So Chicago is the subject and the verb is sits. Number two. There are few buildings in Chicago taller than the John Hancock building. There are few buildings in Chicago taller than the John Hancock building. If we rephrase the sentence, it would be uh, few 
buildings in Chicago uh, are there which are taller than the John Hancock building. So the subject here is buildings and the verb is are. Number three, at its top is an observatory offering a spectacular view of the city. So the subject is observatory and the verb is is. Thank you very much.